Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tuesday at 2. I hope that you had an amazing weekend. You know, I'm looking forward to our Tuesdays, I gotta be honest with you. And we are here for another Tuesday. Uh, we are actually in my house. Um, I have uh, the opportunity to turn one of my rooms into a man cave and uh, it is the place where me and my boys go and it is all things sports up here which means that right now while there is only replays uh, we are having to find other options like outside play um, like we're actually playing the sports <laughs> like we're not just watching the sports um, we're being physically active <laughs> wow while there are no sports and so um it's just it's just yes so welcome to tuesday at two uh last week um we started a conversation um just focusing on spiritual urgency we talked about thomas um which was from a, a conversation we had on sunday mornings uh, our church is called city place church and um my wife and i her name is taisha and we pastor city place and uh, during our Easter service, we talked about Thomas and we just said being close enough to God uh, is what uh, Thomas wanted. He wanted to touch God. And last week um, when we had our Tuesday at two, we talked about just being you know, close to God is not enough. We phrased it like this. We said near enough is not far enough and that we needed a spiritual urgency. And I just wanted to stay on that thought um, right now, just because of the season we're in, um, life has is trying to really redirect the rhythms of our life. But if there's one thing that I know for sure is that in this time, spiritual urgency has to be high. Like there has to be a longing and a hunger for God at a new capacity that you may have never experienced before. You may not have even be, been planted in a church. You may not even have been uh, a church goer or a Christ follower. Um, this is about you and your personal relationship with God. Your relationship with God is not the church you go to. Your relationship with God is the place and the person of God himself. It's, it's, it's the salvation that we experience through the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Like, so this is a relationship thing. This is not a religion thing. And in this moment of time, when all is going uh, uh, crazy for 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 some of you and and COVID-19 is impacting your life the spiritual urgency button needs to be pressed because we all need to have an encounter with the reality of who Jesus is and I found the story in in the Bible you know three weeks back we talked about just how God has given us his word and his word is life and it's alive and uh, it's a great tool for us to be able to hear him speak and to be able to declare his promises. And so I found the scripture. Uh, it's actually a story in the Bible that I wanted to just kind of lean on when we talk about spiritual urgency. When you read it, it's, it's like, how you get that, Damon? But when you dive into it, it's like, ah, got it. So let me give you where it's found. It's found in 2 Kings chapter 13. 14 through 20. Now, I'm not going to read it all to you just for sake of time, because our Tuesdays and twos are just quick moments where we dive into something spiritual or we dive into something practical so that our life can be full. And so there's a story of a of a king and the king, his name is Joash, and he has a really close relationship with a prophet by the name of Elisha. And in biblical days in the Old Testament, the first half of the Bible, um, the, 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 it, it was the custom of the day that there was a prophet or prophets that would speak what God says and declare what God says over the nation. And so the kings at the time would go to the prophet to be able to hear what God says. And so we find in 2 Kings chapter 13 that Elisha is about to die. He's older. He's about to die. He's frail. And Joash has been so close to the voice of God that he didn't want there to be silence. He wanted to be able to be close to Elisha because Elisha was close to God. And so Elisha is literally about to die. And Joash runs to where Elisha is while Elisha is on his bed. 
about to die. And this is what happens. He runs in and the Bible says that he lays on the chest of Elijah and he says, my father, my father, relational is how he was viewing this. Not just religious. He said, relationally, you've spoken into my life. Your voice has been strong for me and the people I lead and for my family. And he says, and I don't want to be without your voice. See, in this season of life where things are coming at us, we do not want to be without the voice of God. We do not want to be in a place where we cannot hear him speak. There has to be a high level of spiritual urgency. Last week, we said that if we don't have spiritual urgency, it could become spiritual complacency, which then makes victory seem distant. But we also said, based on the story of Thomas in John chapter 20, that if we have spiritual urgency, Jesus responds to that spiritual urgency. And so in Second Kings chapter 13, and I want to encourage you to to look for it and read it yourself. Second Kings 13, 14 through 20. It says that the king goes and he lays himself on the prophet Elisha. And Elisha says, do you have a bow and some arrows? And he says, yes. He says, go get them. And he says, here's what I want you to do, Joash. He says, I want you to open up the window and I want you to shoot those arrows out of the window. And he says, when you shoot those arrows out of the window, it's going to bring about victory in your life. So he shoots the arrow. And then he says, now I want you to know that the enemy's going to try to bring things against you. But because you shot the arrow, I want you to know that there is victory in your hand. The enemy shoots arrows in our life, but it's the voice of God that continues to tell you and I, the consistent voice of God continuously to t- tells you and I that there is victory already in our hands. There is victory in your hands right now through the word of God. There's victory available to you through his son, Jesus. So it says that the king shot it. And he says, that's the victory that's in your hands. Then it says that Elisha says, now take some of those arrows. And what I want you to do is I want you to strike the ground. And so it says that the king struck the ground three times. One, two, three. And it says that the prophet Elisha got angry and he said, what are you doing? He said, you only struck the ground three times. But if you would have continuously struck the ground, if you would have struck the ground, what he says this. Look, he says you would have struck the ground in verse 19, five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. He says, but because you stopped your urgency. And you became complacent in just a short moment of time. The victory that you were facing can seem distant. Let me tell you that in this moment in time, it's not going to be good enough to just hear God's voice in the morning. It's not going to be just good enough to be okay with just praying on a Thursday or hanging out on a Tuesday or watching someone online yourself and not diving into God's word in this season of life. Now is the time to have our highest level of spiritual urgency. Now is the the, the time where we go after God in the morning, in the noonday, at nighttime, when we walk, when we ride, when we're cooking, when we're hanging out with our family. Now is the time for us to include God in everything we do. Why? Because there's victory in our hand. I wrote this and I just want you to think about this thought. It's our urgency that gets us to God. It's our urgency that keeps us in his presence. It's our urgency that gets us to God. It's our urgency that keeps us in his presence. Do not lose. Do not lose your fire for the presence of God in this moment. Do not let spiritual complacency cause you to feel like that victory that's promised in your hands is distant. Do not lose your spiritual urgency. See, the key to sustained urgency is the pursuit of the presence of Jesus. You might say, Damon, this sounds good, but I'm not a churchgoer. The key to a relationship with God is the pursuit of his son, Jesus. Jesus died for you. He rose again for you so that you could have life. It's easy to enter into a relationship with God. The Bible says that if you believe that he died for you and rose again, all you have to do is confess it and accept it. It's simple. You just go, Jesus, I believe that you died for me and you rose for me and I accept you as my own Lord and Savior today. 
And the Bible says he comes and he walks with you and lives on the inside of you. So my challenge today on this Tuesday at two is for you and I to walk in and to remain in spiritual urgency. Hey, listen, I get fired up. It's Tuesday at two. It's our time together. Hey, let's continue to hang out on Tuesdays. Let's make this something that we look forward to. Subscribe to the City Place Church YouTube page. Hop over to Facebook. We'll be there on Sundays for a continued conversation. Remember, our Tuesdays at 2, we're going to deal with the spiritual and the practical. We're only going to get better as we get to know each other more. Hey, have a great balance of your week. I can't wait to see you soon.